the Harley Hawks and Franklin to say I pray What's this riding all about? My name is Pam Weaver, past president of the Hilltop Business Association and organizer of several bean dinners held the last Saturday in June at the Westgate Park. Some people say the hilltop is feisty, too many bosses and not enough workers. That is why I chose the bean dinner because it represents unity. Hilltop community is diverse. African American, Somali, Hispanic, and white all enjoy a great day with their family. My children, Heather and Ashley, grew up with the bean dinners, helping their father, Robert, cook hot dogs until around 1992. As far back as I can remember, until the last several years, Don McVeigh counted out beans and put them into a jar. Children and or adults would guess how many beans in the jar without going over, the two top winners would receive a bicycle donated by a business or a bank. There were stage shows, exhibits by local businesses, church doing their community items such as face painting, etc., politicians running for office, from time to time handmade items, and a fishing contest. For many years, the business association used to stock the pond with fish from the hatchery near Coshocton. However, the local residents would fish late that evening before the bean dinner and we would lose half our fish. Games for Children was sponsored by Mount Carmel Health and Baseball Tournament by the Columbus Messenger newspaper. Bean dinners became popular following the Civil War when veterans gathered for reunions and cooked beans and coffee over open fires. Soon the event became popular with politicians running for office. The Hilltop Bean Dinner was started by the Hilltop Business Association in the late 20s as a community festival. Many of the Hilltop settlers were from southern Ohio where bean dinners had crossed the Ohio River from Kentucky and West Virginia. The Bean Dinner was held at Westgate Park 43204 in an area that was once Camp Chase, a military training camp at the beginning of the Civil War. As the North victories grew, more and more Southern prisoners were sent North. By 1861, part of Camp Chase was set aside for prison quarters originally intended to house 450 men. The prison area re reached its maximum in the summer of 1864, which with over 9,000 prisoners. All that remains today of Camp Chase is a cemetery located on Sullivan Avenue, where approximately 2,260 Confederate soldiers are buried.